Welcome everyone to this special meeting with Philomena Dooley. Hello, Philomena, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is a very special occasion, yes. This is, thank you. Welcome, Yoli, from Brazil. This is a multi-continental <laughs> meeting, welcome. Yes, it is very important party today. <laughs> So we have Jed and Susan. And Many while people, their cameras... Yeah. Hi, Susan, welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here in Tampa with an entire class of Jinchen Jitsu students celebrating. Okay. Everybody wave. Hey. <laughs> Welcome, Susan. Thank you for, thank you and your class uh, for taking the time to be with us in such such an important celebration. We lost. Hi, hi, David. <laughs> hi, Mona. Beth. Beth. Hi, Sadaki. <laughs> Many people joining. As people join, we could give our big hug, holding okay. the 26 here at the back and the 22 here with your thumb. So we start, we start hugging, giving big hugs to celebrate Mary's life. The As big exit. Yeah, a big exhale. As people are joining, we are welcoming people. So while we are giving ourselves a big hug, let's watch a special video made by Margaret to this occasion. Let's watch it. I'm here! I'm here. <laughs> That was beautiful. That was really beautiful. Was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. That's lovely. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you, Margaret. Living every uh, every uh, during every birthday, uh, every birthday celebration from of Mary. So. Thank you, Ang, for the great idea that we're uh, now expanding uh, your project. Thank you so much. So uh, we are starting with the 26, and uh, we have some slides, right, Yoli? Yes, you you show yeah. the slides? Yes. Just, just for people to locate, yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So, so, 
Big hug. Big hug. Yeah, Filomena. just for the for the ones who are not Jin Jin Jitsu students yet, so to locate the 22s and the 26. And as we self help, Philomena will will talk with us about Mary and her experience with Mary, celebrating Mary's life. This is a quote from uh, Mary's work. Jinshin Jitsu is the most <clears throat> with the knowledge of Jinshin Jitsu, all that is of life. No matter what field you are in, or what training for, the become much more readily understandable. All fears, big and small, must melt away and complete peace will take over. We don't have to memorize anything. We just let the knowledge become part of us. And that's what Jinshin Jitsu is all about. When we give ourselves this hug, our 22s is helping us with our unloading, our exhaling, and our 26 is helping us with our inhale, our renewing. 26 means everything is complete. Your next set of safety energy locks, Yoli. I, I am think... adding the slides, yes. Yeah, I think we can keep holding for a while the 26. And if you wish, you can also uh, go to the next one. That would be to to hold the tens. I think 10, it's a good safety energy lock in terms of celebrating abundance and prosperity and all what Mary gave us as a present to our life. Jin Shin Jitsu was a, a big present to my life. When I started Jin Shin Jitsu, it was not because of any project that I had before, but through my life, I had many challenges that if if it was not for Jin Shin Jitsu, I, I don't know how it would be. <laughs> so it's a very, it's a, a treasure to have Jin Shin Jitsu in my life. And I always remember 10 and the gratitude, safety and luck 10, abundance and gratitude for all the gifts of life. And as to hold 10, it's difficult to self-help the 10. We have the option to hold the high 19 and high one. So if you wish to keep just hugging yourself, it's great if you want. If you wish, you, you also can uh, hold your high 19 at the middle of your arm with your high ones at the middle of your thigh. And we keep talking about Mary. And if, Philomena, if you want to say more things about Mary and your experience with her, Or if any other instructor wants to say something. Many people are joining here. We see people uh, from all over the world and Blight saying that it, it is her fourth generation that uh, it, it is uh, enjoying Jin Shin Jitsu. So many generations, many people in all, all parts of the world. This is so, it, it's such a bless. Yeah, well, for me, uh, 40, following the life 
well, 19 years of a medical project. And um, somebody told me if I wanted to get on with life, I should go and visit Mary Gormeister in Scottsdale, Arizona. So I did. And uh, a 10 day series of Jin Shin Jitsu brought me back to life. So here I am. Uh, my experience of Jin Shin Jitsu has been totally amazing. And I've, as a result, presented classes in many places of the world. And as a result, I have many of you as my students. And I am so happy that so many people have taken up the art of Jin Shin Jitsu. It is truly an art. Yeah, Terry. It's teach Terry is saying that she is teaching a, a self help class in Scottsdale. So many many people are joining are, are together today in many places of the world, celebrating Mary's life. This is so great. Yeah, it is really great. And, uh, and Philomena, while you're you're talking, I could instantly go back to 1981 and placing a phone call to some lady I had never met with an Irish brogue who um, told me she hoped that the class would happen. Uh, she needed 20 people and I was one of those 20 people. And soon after I hung up, uh, she, she cut in contact with me and told me that there were enough people to have a class. And going into that, uh, first class in New York City in 1981 on the uh, in Hell's Kitchen with 20 people at this hotel. Uh, my life was changed uh, forever, and I got to experience the the ability within each of us to be able to know how to help ourselves, to direct our life in a different way, and to be able to know. Uh, the truth of the creator inside all of us in its own expression. And as Mary said, there isn't any one way, but all ways lead to the same goal. And that's uh, to know oneself, to be the harmony of, uh, of this expression in this life. So I'm not only thankful to Mary and, and this hundred years that she was here with us, but also to you, Philomena, for, for helping to spread it also. And, you know, any great teacher always has, others who carry the, the light to continue it so it never goes out. And I think that to me, that's what our, our day is about, is that we each have a candle, we each light it with this uh, beautiful art that we call Jin Shin Jitsu to spread it to others. And, um, but first we have to live it. And um, seeing you here, Philomena, you look really beautiful and it's, it's a wonderful birthday celebration uh, of Mary and of each other. This is uh, Susan here, and uh, I just see how the line of the flow of energy keeps moving. Philomena met Mary, brought Mary to New York. Jed was able to be at that first class, and after that first class, he called me and said, Susan, this is something that you will just love, and you can help yourself, and you can help other people. I had no idea what he was talking about. And look at where my life has changed. And there's so much more harmony and growth and movement. And it's so amazing how we are able to pass and continue the torch of moving the light to each person we meet as we ourselves connect more to the light of the divine creator inside each one of us. So I give thanks to Juro, who passed it to Mary, who inspired Philomena to bring her, Mary, to New York, to my brother, who then called his sister and said, hey, I'll love you more if you bring more light into your life. And that's how we feel. We've built a huge community, a huge family, and it keeps growing, all thanks to Mary. I, I actually didn't say that. You didn't? I love, I love you whether you did Jin Shin Jitsu or not. But I, I, love you. I wanted you to be here for a long time. Yeah. 
Well, you wanted me to love myself, and that's how, what Jin Jin Jitsu has given me, the ability to love myself and to know myself and to bring yeah, more Jin peace and harmony. Help families get along. I <laughs> that. And it brings people closer, as Blythe knows, for four generations. And Philomena, her whole family, her grandchildren, they've all experienced it. So it, we just keep spreading it. It's, it's, amazing. it's an amazing thing. Um, and the greatest gift is not to hold on to anything. And that was Mary. She says, I have, I hold no secrets. Everything's available to everybody. And, um, what, what a, what a wonderful thing that these, uh, incredible treasures can be shared by everybody and not just be held by a few people. What an amazing opportunity to be as one, as Mary celebrates her 100 years, it's one as was said here. So, and to be one with so many people, we have 228 people together, but we know that there are classes that, that are happening now. So many people are in the same, in this symphony together, celebrating life of, of Mary that, it transforms so many lives and now we are we have the, the 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 baton was passed to us to help people to transform their lives so everybody here that we are together now we are all we all have this gift to share as as uh, practitioners as students as uh, instructors we are all together uh, with this beautiful gift that can bring unity in this this time of when the world is, has so much division here in brazil we are going through elections and there are so much division in our in our community so it's good to have to, to, to remember that we are one so it's it's a bless to have so many I'm people wondering. in the same I'm wondering if Margaret is able to turn on her camera and her mic, if it's working for her. It would be a Not good time for you to join yeah, us. Again. And we are still yeah. doing self-help, right, help. Yoli? Yes, yes. Holding high ones and high oh. 19. Okay. You can change, you can change the, 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 the arm and the leg now if you wish. Hold the other side. <laughs> and 19 and 10, they are one. So we are all one right now. <laughs> we are always one, but right now even more. <laughs> okay, it seems that uh, Margaret's not being able to join us. Her camera is not working. This I'm here. Oneness, this 10, uh, this high 19, this high one, would you please? Lumina, would you comment something about this oneness being one and this self-help that we are doing right now? Thank you.
Thank you very well, much. Then, what would be really nice as we're doing this, uh, talking about oneness, let's all um, think in, in terms of um, the gratitude and how Jin Shin Jitsu has affected our individual lives. And if you want to close your eyes or just whatever you're doing now and, and just think how rich your life is and how it's spread to your family and how it's touched people in ways that we, we really can't imagine. Um, we really are truly blessed. And, and let's also think outward to all those people who, are, who have passed on in our Jin Shin Jitsu community, who have uh, utilized Jin Shin Jitsu uh, for their wellness and for the ease of their passing. Um, as we age, we can be very graceful in that process and Jin Shin Jitsu allows us to be there and also to help our loved ones who may have passed over. And all of those who, who will come to Jin Shin Jitsu in the future, our children, our grandchildren, people all over the world. And let us imagine this oneness, this 10 of abundance going out to spread the word, open people's minds and hearts through the world to the world leaders, that their tens can open for uh, sharing abundance to those people they represent, to those who are disenfranchised, uh, to those who may be suffering, um, whether it be physically, mentally, or emotionally. That this great prayer of unity that we all who are uh, listening to this webinar now or listen to it in the future can feel this energy inside you, uh, can feel it even more powerfully transforming your own uh, body and, and may it go out to heal our world so that we can be a part of this great change that's happening to Mother Earth right now, to all of the plant beings and all of the animal kingdom, uh, to the waters, the, the air, to the, tish, the tissue of the soil and to the underground world. May, may everything come together in a, in a new beginning through this 10 that we hold, this oneness that unites us all. It's so easy to feel separate from it. But I feel that when we're doing this together, or when we do it by ourselves, that it connects us to people all over the world who may be joining in. We may not know it, but maybe through the technology of this webinar, we begin to see that we're, we really, there is no distance between any of us. And there is no politics, there's no religion. It's all spirit that connects us and the love in our heart um, and care for one another. Uh, I don't think that Jin Shin Jitsu can be a selfish thing. It, it helps us to touch ourselves and then we want to explode and touch other people. It, it truly is magical. Um, no matter where you are when you come into it, it, it always opens us to our biggest story, the great, the great book that we all represent. Um, but may we all achieve what we've come here for. So thank you. Thank you all. As we prepare for the broadcast uh, that of the footage that we edited uh, from last meeting, I'm wondering if any of you would like to add something else in this such special occasion, it's open for you. Okay. I think we can start the footage, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, on behalf of Jin Shin Jitsu, thank you all for being here with us. And uh, thanks to Filomena, to Susan, to Jed, to Ioli, to Margaret. She's been trying to connect, but the camera is not working. But she made that special video for us in the beginning. Thank you for being with us in such a special occasion. Thank you, Mary. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. And Philomena, during during the video, uh, maybe uh, everyone could watch uh, the video doing self-help, right? Yeah.
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ali, for making this possible for us. Yeah, thank you very much. So we will thank watch the so video. Thank you so much, Ali. We will watch the video and we can hold the fingers and for the ones who knows the, the, the mudras, we can play with the mudras, okay? okay. Thank you all. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Yeah. Let's stay one. Bye bye. God bless Mary. God bless Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I <laughs> it's it's such a honor and um, great pleasure to be able to celebrate my mom's 100 year birthday with so many people who who loved her and who have been following her work who have um, carried her work on for the world to to be able to enjoy um, all of this is um, is such a blessing for for Jin Shin Jitsu, for my mother, for all of us, to have people like you, who um, your water bottle. We found the water bottle. I knew we were looking for this water bottle. Look at that! Miracles happen. <laughs> but it's it's just so nice to have you all here, and it's um it's really special for me to um, to look into your faces and to see how Jin Shin Jitsu has has lived in all of you. Um, it's just a great honor, and I'd like to um, welcome you to a day of celebration for Mary Burmeister and for Jin Jin Jitsu. Thank you Thank so you. much. And Thank you. Yeah. Piggybacking on, on what David just said about looking in, into your faces, start with a story right away from Mary. Um, uh, in 2002, at the organizers meeting, you know, uh, some of you may have been there. Um, you know, David would always bring Mary in, you know, so everyone could have their time with her and have, you know, pictures taken. And when I was sitting next to her, you know, kind of at the, I was at the end of the line, kind of sitting with her, and um, she was just kind of looking around. And I said, Mary, you know, we. We really miss your classes. And she said, I know. <laughs> you know how modest she was. And Mary, she was so humble, but she wasn't modest. You know? And and then I said, you know, but we've really come along we've really learned a lot, you know, in the last few years. And she goes, I know, I can see your faces. And it just you know. Just, just what, what you were saying, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was like, you know, Mother Courage, you know, looking over her, her. We were all here because of Mary, you know. And, and um, just something I said on the first day of our organizers meeting, I'd like to repeat because uh, one time in class I, I as many people, you know, all you remember, we'd all, during a break, you know, you first, you know, rush up to Mary to say something or share something or, you know. And I had found a poem that I thought she might like and I showed it to her and she was reading it and then it just clicked something in her and she goes, Yeah, I know. Sometimes I wonder why I teach even. But people seem to enjoy it, so I guess I'll keep doing it. You know, and that's why we're here. You know, it's just Mary's generosity. You know, not, not that she felt that she needed to do this or she was going to change the world, you know. People seem to enjoy it, so I guess I'll keep doing it. And it's just, I just love that, you know. So that's, you know, I hear that. I hear that voice all the time. You know, I mean, we all hear Mary's voice a lot, right? So.
asshole. There I am. Uh, I wanted to do this at this time, uh, partly because I like to entertain if I get a chance. Uh, but, but the real reason is faces were mentioned, and I'm reminded of Mary saying, and it has to do with the, with the fingers. She says sometimes, and I, maybe it's also written someplace, at some point we will know Jin Jin Jitsu well enough that all that you will need to do is the fingers. And I had an experience with Mary years ago and with a group of, it was lunchtime, and a group of seven or eight new students came and were gathered at the back, and I stood back and I watched. She worked with their fingers, and I had the pleasure of watching faces become absolutely beautiful. They were stressed, it was the first day of class, stressed, pulled tight, and they all relaxed, and just from holding the fingers. Now, I know now, that she was doing the fingers that were involved with face flow. I didn't know that at that time, so I just assumed she was holding all the fingers, so that, that helped me uh, move to holding, holding my fingers kind of thing. But that was, that was the, the story that I always remember of Mary, uh, that the fingers were the simplest, and uh, she proved that by virtue of how people changed right in front of me. Um, so that's... That's the important thing I, about Mary. Uh, simplicity was the focus. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carolyn. For those of you that don't know me, from Houston, Texas. Just wanted to let you know that I started with the sessions under Blythe's grandmother in Venice, California in 72, 71 or 72. And at that time, practitioners taught self-help, so she always sent me home with self-help exercises. So I don't think there was even a self-help class at that time. So that was how Mary was getting the art out. And so I've been doing self-help since 1972, which is amazing. I took my first class in 1980 with Mary in Boulder with Wayne as the organizer. And it, wasn't, it was 30 or 40 people. It wasn't a huge class, but it was a big class. And yes, we all lined up, and yes, she listened to our pulses. But I was sitting in the front second row on that side, and occasionally Mary would come in front a little bit of her table. I didn't understand anything, and it was way over my head, but I observed and watched her, and she always was touching herself. And she would have her hands on herself, behind her back, on her side, holding her arm, and that was the one thing I took away from that class. <laughs> that I really got was to always have my hands purposefully somewhere. My first uh, experience with Mary was when she was uh, already in a wheelchair. And I had come up uh, to just have sessions. And I had heard that sometimes she, they brought her in on Wednesday. And uh, so I was hoping that would be the case. But, you know, uh, I knew also that that might not happen. And so on Wednesday morning, I was having my session, and the door opens, and David uh, pushes Mary into the room. And I was just in awe. And, you know, she didn't say anything. She didn't talk. And she put her hand on my left wrist, all four fingers, and then her other hand down on my ankle. And she just looked at me and smiled. And she just gently rubbed. I had a cyst on my wrist that I had, had drained twice, and it came back. I didn't say anything about having that. And when she finished the session, the cyst was gone and it never came back. Mm -hmm. Debbie remembers, Debbie was in there and uh, she just looked at me and smiled. Well, I expected that. Be the smile, they said. <laughs> she said. <laughs> uh, I'd just like to say one thing. Uh, having uh, I had polio when I was three and a half, um, 
I can't begin to tell you what Jinshin Jutsu has done for me and for my clientele base. The things that I have seen are absolutely unforgettable and unimaginable. And I am 72 years old. I take an all natural thyroid, and that's all. And I work 42, 43, sometimes more appointments a week. So I think I'm a little like her on that, except that I don't work on the weekends. <laughs> and she did. <laughs> so um, uh, it was something that I'd searched for for a long time, had, having studied all kinds of modalities all over the world. And when it's done from my clientele base and my friends, it's just amazing, it never ceases to amaze me what she brought to so many people. So, uh, thank you, Mary. And what an incredible blessing. And, you know, from my bottom of my heart, we need more like you. Thank you. This is really awesome, isn't it, you guys? This is really incredible. I, I also am feeling um, the presence of not only Mary, but Philomena, certainly I'm thinking of. Uh, some of the other instructors who aren't here. Lynn. Um, wonderful, wonderful family we've got. And it's, it's just a blessing to be a part of this incredible journey that Mary initiated for us. Um, I, st I met Mary in November the 14th of 1977. I was in the middle of my Saturn return. <laughs> and I want you to know Saturn returns can be a really wonderful thing. And uh, I walk into a door and there met sat Mary. We had 11 people. Phyllis Singer was in that class with me, actually. And uh, had 11 people, three of us were new. Where was it? It was in Scottsdale. It was on the old 67th place oh, office. Right, the old office. The old office. The one that Mary fed the birds out front in the bird little tray. Yeah. And it was a wonderful event. I, as many of you know, I, I went to a class looking for a path, a way in life. I'd, I'd left dental school, I'd left the education system, and I was really wandering. I, I like that expression, not all who wander are lost, but I, it was it was my journey and I quickly in that quickly in that week I realized uh, it was going to be a long long journey and uh, it continues to be a blessed beautiful journey I want to tell you why I chose to study you know many of you know that in my my upbringing I was raised with a really fundamental kind of Christian biblical story about right and wrong and rules and and I left the organized church and uh, joined the New Age community, right? And then I realized the New Age community had just as many rules as the church had. No sugar, no tobacco, no alcohol, no, 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 no. You know? Not too much fun. <laughs> yeah, fun was definitely not on the list, Jill. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> because somebody was watching. Yeah. <laughs> and in that class, someone asked a question. I, it was toward the end of text two, Although in that day, you guys, text one was text two. We started, the first flow I ever gave to anyone was an, a lung flow. And in fact, that was a pleasant memory. I was in the midst of absolute overwhelm, not knowing at all what I'm doing with my hands on somebody's body. His name was Bob, he was from Minnesota. Big guy, and here I am doing a lung flow. And I had my hands on his 14s and his 22s, and all of a sudden his lungs his chest just dropped. And all of that lung swelling that she talks about with the lung function disharmony, all of that lung swelling dropped. Well, my mouth dropped, right? And I looked around and did anybody else see what's going on? Did you get... And Mary was standing leaning against the door jamb. She looked at me, she smiled, and she walked away. 
that was Mary, you know, just seeing the process. So that was the beginning for me. And then toward the end of that class, I'd, I'd raised my hand so many times I had, it wasn't frozen shoulder, but it was definitely a shoulder project. And I would raise my hand and I'd say, Mary, I don't understand. And she'd say, it's okay. It's okay, wait. Well, I called home halfway through the class and said, if she says it's okay one more time, I'm gonna hit her. It is, <laughs> it is not okay. I raised my hand another time and I said, Mary, I don't understand. And she said, I know. <laughs> she had a great sense of humor. I hope you folks in the video and, and from some of our stories, I hope you've seen and, and will see the humor in Mary. She was so funny, so funny and so personable. It was like someone else mentioned in the story, you'd, you'd run up to Mary after class and you'd want to tell her, thank you, Mary, that was, you were talking just to me. She'd already gone. Mary packed her bags and she wouldn't get back to her office or, or her time alone. The, the last mentoring class I present here in Scottsdale, uh, because I'm, I was in experience with Mary, in the moment, you know, um, we have to give sessions and Mary came to, 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 to work with the students. And you know, Every session, we, we, we could see in Mary's face how, how she enjoyed that moment. So she's, you know, uh, usually Judd brings Mary in the wheelchair, and she is approaching to the, the table and Mary's hands <laughs> was there. But one, one day, it was, I think, the last session, M uh, Judd brought Mary, and Mary stay quiet for a while, and then she used just one hand to hold the hand of the, the, the students on the table. And the other hand was, and I could see the face of the, the students, she was so frustrated, Mary was not touching her. <laughs> and in one moment, uh, Jody appears and they said, Mary's not touching me. <laughs> and so I, I remember Jody, Mary, come on and hold her hands. <laughs> and Mary, remove her hand and keep holding Aww. this way for the entire session. Finally, at the end of the session, uh, Jody took Mary up. And I was finishing the, the, my, my, my flow, and when I finished, the student sit on the table and I can't believe I have a back pain for years and this is the first time it's gone and for me it's a great lesson because we saw Mary this morning mention simplify 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 there's nothing more simple than just hold the hip and it was just enough. <laughs> so for me, it's amazing, this, this simple experience. And it's motivated me to my journey in search of more simplicity. Thank you, Mary. I was blessed to meet Mary in 1973. And um, first, and so the first, and it really, I met her through a friend. So, and she, uh, well, I won't go way back in that story. So, uh, she gave, we kept asking her so many questions, she finally said, we, we have to have a class. So she invited my friend and I to her home to stay in the house and have a class in her home. There were four of us. And I'm sitting, listening to this little Japanese lady who is five, was four feet 10, yeah. and she, did not like me to say that because she always wore heels and she would say to me, Muriel, I'm five feet. <laughs> <laughs> I finally learned not to say too much. So uh, I didn't understand the word she was saying, but the minute she, but part of it was to have a Jinshin Jitsu session. And the, when she gave me a session, I knew that my body had been looking for that and everything. And uh, you may not know it, but I'm very shy but I managed to ask her for a second session, and she gave it to me, and I never left since then. 
The second class, we had 12 people. What a disappointment. <laughs> but there's a story that stands out with Mary. She was very feisty. We were in New York. And uh, it was a large class. New York always had a large class. And one of the students started to have an appendicitis attack. And Mary was in the bathroom and they ran and they said, oh, you've got to call an ambulance, Mary, because, you know, the student is not feeling well. And Mary said to me, she said, there I was teaching this wonderful, quiet art of love, and they want me to call an ambulance with all these sirens. So she went to the student and she went in. Like Mary could do. Like only Mary could do. And you could hear the pop, and the student was fine. It's interesting because she could be so feisty and so loving. And somebody mentioned it early in the morning that when you were with her, she was so present. And you know, she taught us so much just by her own personality. When you were on the table, she was so present. Nothing existed except Mary and you. And then, you know, she'd leave and everything, and then you'd see her in the hall, and it's like, oh, you don't exist. <laughs> you know, because her focus was different. But she taught so much. You know, I, I go in for my sessions and I think, oh, I've got to tell her all my woes, you know, I've got to get rid of this. And she'd look at me and said, I'm going to just do a fourth depth. <laughs> How disappointing I didn't get to give her my woes, but I felt better afterwards. She, Mary was, she was always teaching, but you didn't know she was teaching. She had a way of touching her soul, you know. And, and even lessons now that you may not, I may not have picked up when I was younger, I, I, I feel them so vividly because she just has a way of opening everybody to their own soul. And that's why she almost changed the name of Jin Shin Jitsu to now know myself. To her, this was the very, very important thing. And self-help self was very, very important to her because that took you from the outside world to the inside world. And you may, you may have to think about it. Who do you avoid the most? You avoid yourself the most, is what she would tell me. You've got to look inside. That's where it all is. And that's the beauty of Jin Shin Jitsu. We have it here. We have other people's hands. And it, it just, um, the lessons just go on. Any lesson she gave you, she would. Don't you think so, David? She was always teaching? All the time. All the time. Yeah, she was always the teacher. But she never made it sound that way. You know, she just always seemed to key into where you were and knew what to say for you just to, to hear it. And the thing is, I think when she used to say, look until you see and listen until you hear, is what she was trying to tell me, that just be patient and, and, and you'll see more deeply all the time and you will hear at a deeper level. So the art of Jin Shin Jitsu, now know myself, is a wonderful, wonderful gift and she will always be with us teaching us because once you hear her words, they never leave your soul. There's so many stories and um, I'm inspired based on what you said to share this one. You know, as a student, you want to do your best and you want to know everything, you want to know everything, and you want to know it instantly, and you want to be able to retain it. Oh, that's another whole story. Okay. So uh, I had the opportunity to see a client, a, a, a young man, who was very ill. And I had no idea what I was doing, and I have my chart that I had draw, drawn, copying what Mary did in the relationships, and she would draw these uh, ovals and how they connected, and lines that would go, and you would want everybody else's drawings because theirs, the other students were always better than yours. <laughs> and I put it down on the table, you know, on the floor, and I, um, I was being Mary. I had the person on the floor. And, on my knees, not so easy, but Mary did it, so I should be able to do it too. And I listened to the pulse, I had no idea what I heard. And I just started to work. And this was a, a young man who was 27 who was practically catatonic, right? 
And he got up after the, the session and he said to his mother, I think I could take the car and go swimming. And his mother's mouth was wide open. She hadn't heard him talk and she had to lift him out of bed and this was like a miracle that happened. So you know that Jed is my brother and I called him up and I shared with him what had happened and he said to me, what clothes did you use? No memory of what I used. <laughs> Not at all. So I now feel the worst student in the entire world. <laughs> I didn't know anything of Mary's lessons because I don't remember what I utilized in that session. So I had the opportunity in class to go up to Mary and I tell her the story and I'm like ready to be into tears and I'm confessing I'm a horrible student. And when I said I don't remember one flow that I used, and her response was, good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all she said. And she said, I hope you continue to give him sessions. And I realized then it was all the lessons rolled into one. It was about being in this now, right? About seeing everyone in this moment and, and not to carry from the past to the present. And it keeps resonating in my mind all of those wonderful, tiny little lessons that built exactly what you're saying into bigger and bigger and bigger stories to help me. And so the gratitude just keeps continuing with each breath that I take. And then I exhale. Thank you, Mary. journey to Jin Jin Jitsu started with my very first um, session by a practitioner in New York City and I woke up from that after years of massage and acupuncture and all different treatment kinds of treatments always searching for health and I woke up opened one eye and said what was that <laughs> then I got encouraged by that practitioner to attend my first Jin Jin Jitsu class in New York City and I was warned to bring food and water. And I thought, where am I going <laughs> to this journey? I can't, New York has delis on every corner, but bring food and water to this class because your brain is going to work. I found that out later. Your brain worked so much with new ideas that you just go like this. You just kept eating. The whole class was eating. It's changed a little bit, doesn't happen. It took me about five years before I could stop eating. <laughs> Because the brain needs food, what's right? The, what's the secret? What's the secret? How do you stop eating? <laughs> In class. I know. <laughs> so that's what I do. Oh, I don't know, because now it's more easy to digest. I don't need to all, eat all the time. But it was an amazing experience, I think, the second day. And I went with no expectations, just as a part of moving forward on the path. And I think the second day I was a little bit late because I had two kids and I walk in and people are all lying on the tables, like low tables, all in different sort of states of ecstasy or whatever it was, but real deep harmony and relaxation and people were working on them and Mary was at the tables giving talks, working on people and it was magnetic. It wasn't anything specific that happened, but it was just an ambience that you were in this state of harmony and balance and care, and you didn't have to do anything. It was happening, it was present. And from the classes that I took with her, that's what I always came home with, this sense of we're all in this together, we're all harmonizing, we don't need any perfection, expectation, it's just here now, and made great connections with people in sharing that space. And that is what she brought in, you know, just like a direct connection. And I'm grateful to her for that because Jin Jin Jitsu makes a universal sense that you can study anything and you can apply it to the principles of Jin Jin Jitsu. You can make sense of anything after 34 years of studying. If I just Bring it back to the principles, and I, I call it the essence. The essence of life, actually. So you bring it back, and 
Jinshin Jitsu ties it all together into oneness. And I'm grateful because that was what I look for in my life. I've been looking for it. I'm still looking for it, or I'm still in the process of understanding it. And the awareness and the knowledge that she put into it, and that everybody, we all put into it because it's expanding human consciousness. And I think that's what we're all here for. And Jin Shin Jitsu is just this incredible gift, which is really the gift of life and being human and being able to see, listen, hear, taste, touch, and love. That's why we're in the body. So I'm grateful that I am able to experience this joy from this knowledge and awareness that she shared. Thank you. I think it was about my third year in Jin Shinjutsu, and I was having um, pretty extreme sinus issues, and I had the courage to go up in this 110 person class <laughs> to Mary. And, you know, I told her, Mary, I'm, I've been having sinus issues. I've been having sinus issues my whole life. Um, you know, what should I do? And she said, oh, hold your ring finger like this. For a year. <laughs> For a year. <laughs> so I did. I, I, I was uh, just a bit disappointed because I was hoping she'd give me another a few flows, right? <laughs> but this was it. And I did, I was very diligent. And the sinus completely went away, but I got 14 warts on my right hand. Wow. So the next year, <laughs> I go up, and you know, I'm sure she does not remember any of this because she, people were at her all the time asking for self-help. She had hundreds of students in her classes, so, I went up and I said, Mary, you know, um, last year you told me to hold my ring finger like this for my sinuses, and I did, and I, the sinus issue is gone, but I have these 14 warts. She took my hand, she looked carefully at them, and she said, oh, hold your ring finger like this. <laughs> for a year. <laughs> second year, so then I was really disappointed because I wanted something different. <laughs> the warts go away in the order they came. It was fascinating. And by the third year, I just had eczema between my fingers. <laughs> so, I, I went up Next class said, wow, you know, the sinus issue is gone, it stayed gone, the warts left in the, in, in the order they came, and now I just have this eczema here. Huh, hold your ring finger for a year. <laughs> and I did, and that was it. And it took me several, well, many years, really, to understand this was all the unwinding of second death. Yeah. And that definitely was my issue and um, it was fascinating to see how it was working you know from deep to surface I don't think it's what happens to us as much as how we go through it and um, I, I think for me that's the greatest gift of Jin Shin Jutsu And so I had the exact same feeling being a 28-year-old with my very cool, torn jeans. You know, when I saw this woman come out, I thought, oh my gosh, I am in the wrong place. And, but when she started speaking, I didn't necessarily believe anything. Um, which actually, you know, skepticism is fourth death, and some of that was fear. And skepticism, fourth death is balance. So I'd heard a lot of untrue things, as, as we all have. And um, so I was going to find out, which is uh, my path. 
And um, in that first class, I had a very clear goal, which was that my daughter was critically ill, and I was looking for help for my daughter. So, um, and I was totally willing for it to be come from anywhere, be anything. Uh, I thought I wasn't stuck to any particular philosophy. Nevertheless, when I left that class, it was like my world had crashed. Because even though I found that this woman really knew something, I also found that everything that I thought I didn't believe in, but I actually did believe in, had just fallen apart. And uh, so I, I actually left devastated and with amazing tools. So the first thing that Mary did for me was uh, she would not let me try to fix my daughter. In other words, she was going to participate in that attitude less than zero. So I was a very shy person. I couldn't speak in front of three people without my voice cracking. Yet in this class of over 100 people, I couldn't help my arm would shoot up, you know? <laughs> and I'd say, Mary, my daughter has hearsay. <laughs> hearsay. Hearsay. And so then I'd listen for how other people were asking questions, because people asked a lot of questions, you know, and she answered them. She gave them suggestions. And I'd try it that way. Mary, doctors have told my daughter that there's a doc hearsay. Wow. You know? Um, Mary, my daughter's genetic thing is, is critical hearsay. You know, it was like, and I was completely like, oh. I started to believe she doesn't like me. Because she answered everybody else, even if somebody said, my husband has a heart condition. She'd say, you know, 10 flow, 15 flow. Or I, it, she would not interact with me in this way. And, um, and yet, you know, I was desperate enough that I didn't get up and leave. I was a little insulted. And, and a little hurt and very insecure. Um, on the fifth day, someone brought my daughter for Lucy, for, Lucy, for Mary to listen to the pulse of. And um, Jill had been giving Lucy sessions and I had taught me simple self-help techniques to use, which I'd been using every day, because it helped her feel better. It didn't affect the condition. She was in critical care very frequently. And so the main project was respiratory. So what did we just hear in the video? Mm -hmm. Right? She listened to Mary, and we had been using 10 flow, breathing flow, 13 flow, second, you know, etc. She listened to Lucy's pulse and she said fourth depth. And this is where I started to get it. Like, and, and over and over again with everything people have been sharing today, there's a whole bunch of other worlds. Mary was in the present with who's here now. And that's never the diagnosis. That's never the label. That's not what it looks like. It's who is, what is. When, when Lucy would get off the table, and I get on the table, she would get in Mary's shoes, which had these heels, mm -hmm. but her feet fit in the flat part. <laughs> <laughs> and she'd clop around, and I think she'd go out and clop around the office, you know, and, and um, so that visit, Mary gave her three pairs of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> which, which she took home and decided were flamenco dancers' shoes. <laughs> so the background of this is, before Jensen just was it, she could never have danced. She couldn't breathe enough. And for y years, any time she wanted to flamenco dance, she put on Mary's shoes and her, you know, shawls and scarves. And she put on the cassette recorder, and she, <laughs> I think uh, Karen may have given her a lesson. <laughs> it's amazing hearing the stories that everybody has. <clears throat> Mary's a great soul, and that's, that's what 
it comes down to for me. Listening to the stories and meeting her, you know, we all have our ideas and our attitudes, our thoughts, but when you feel a great soul, they touch you wherever you are. But the interesting thing, um, I know that she's a great soul, but she would say very clearly, I'm not perfect. It was one of the classes someone uh, was asked her a question, and it happened to be at a time when Mary's sister was in the class too. It was, it was here in, in Scottsdale. And someone asked her, you know, Mary, your attention is so, such a great art and can do all these things, how come you wear glasses? It was a little different than, she, she thought a minute, she said, you know, I'm not perfect or I wouldn't be here. If I was perfect, I'd leave. My perception, right, she would never utter that. She would never tell you that because she didn't want herself to look beyond just this, what we could all be. She didn't say, I've been here thousands and thousands of incarnations and I'm way up here and I'm gonna help you lift up. She just said, I'm, we're all the same. And that's what I really love about this humility because it gave me the possibility, I too, can know my, myself to be what I love in her. What, um, to continue what everybody else said, it's the authenticity of her. It's like you, you don't just feel like you, she's seeing you, but she's also who she, she is. And um, I, when I was, you know, going for treatments, I have been with, you know, many meditation teachers and gurus, and so I had my, my, my projections. And um, she was very different because she wasn't always smiley. When she, she wasn't smiley, and, and then, you know, after every treatment, she was thanking God for being with her and I remember one day you know me being all excited that she's coming in and and you know I think it was the third session or so and and, and I said to her you know I was always already lying uh, good morning Mary how are you <coughs> I'm awake <laughs> <laughs> and, and and then the, on the other time <coughs> Besides, she was so sweet always, you know, she was checking out, you know, you know this, she was checking out the legs and, you know, telling me what beautiful fabric I had on my pants, while at the same time she was just <laughs> like Jiro Morai checking out your calves and checking out the back of the legs. But she also liked your pants. And she, also she likes the pants, of course. <laughs> For me, this is me, I loved her authenticity. I loved her that she, you would meet somebody that is real and so you could relax because she's real there was a real a possibility to meet and I remember you know because I in, in those days I I had to come later on I, I was coming from Germany all the way over and uh, get treatments and so I thought well you know I might as well ask for self-help so I said at the end you know Mary would you mind giving me some self-help knowing that she usually doesn't but I, I gave it a try anyhow don't work <laughs> don't work it, it got me really my German attitude like you know give it to me I'm gonna work it out it was, it was really good yeah so thank you um. And one day I decided to, to come here in this country, and it was in 84. So I was waiting and I, I went to the office. It was not easy to find, but I, I found <laughs> the office. And David, uh, you welcomed me. I was on the bed waiting Patricia. Um, if I remember, because at this time I didn't speak English, you know, I don't remember what you said, but I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just married or something like that, or I don't remember. And and you, I think you told me that I am sorry, but it would be with Patricia, something like that. So I received a session with Patricia, and it was wonderful, wonderful. And after. 
I was waiting on the bed because I was very shy. I didn't know what to do, you know. <laughs> I have to move or stay. <laughs> and you come back and you say, do you want a session with Mary? I said, yes. So Mary came. Oh. Yeah. So, and I didn't want to, well, because I was very shy, I didn't speak English. I don't remember what had happened, so she listened my pulses and she did a, a session. And she didn't say nothing, you know, and I didn't want to, to talk. I was so pleased just after the session with Pat. And I remember that she started on the right part and turned like that, and she went to my shoulders, to my 11. Oh my God. <laughs> I had the impression that her hands were, were inside of my body. <laughs> and it, it, it was not painful, it was more than painful. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so shy that I didn't want to say, well, <laughs> you know. And she didn't talk. She, she didn't talk to me, she didn't say nothing. But at this time, like a mantra, she said, why using your brain? Why using your brain? <laughs> yeah, at, that, at this time, I said, I was, it was like, it was so painful that I promise you, <laughs> I never use my brain again. <laughs> So, I would have sessions pretty often with Mary, and I was always fascinated that she could listen to your wrist and then go hold two places on your body and you would see God. <laughs> it was like, how does she know? That never hurt before, and she would listen, and then she'd hold two places. And it never hit me as hard as... One time after a car accident I was in, I would get this big head swelling. And she listened to the pulses and she held the coccyx in my opposite 16. And it felt like somebody went in with a vacuum and sucked the fluid out. It was unreal. It was one of those moments where I'm like, how can that be? She only held two places. And it made me really fascinated about the pulses. And, you know, most of the time she would listen. And one time I went and she would listen and she said, lucky me, lucky you. So, but she didn't say anything about what I needed. She just said, lucky me, lucky you. And then I got really determined that I was going to convince Mary. I was going to convince her that she could tell me what she was hearing and tell me why she went to those areas. And so I talked, you know, I'm telling her, Mary, today you can tell me what you really hear. I want to know. And I, I laid down and she listened. She was a hard worker. I was like, no, tell me what, you know, and she, she wouldn't say a word. Next, but she did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so the next time I'm telling her all the stories and I'm looking and I'm fishing and I'm like, Mary, today you can tell me what it is you hear. And she listened. She got very quiet and she goes, with a big twinkle in her eye, she goes, I know all your secrets. <laughs> yeah. And at one point I kind of gave up. It was my week of sessions, and I, I go and I lie down the next time. I didn't say anything. I wasn't going to talk her into it anymore. I was letting go. And at the end of the session, she listened. She listened. She said, I will remember your body to God. One of the things that we have talked a lot about this weekend is diversity in our classrooms. And I hope you see that the outreach is really um, supporting that mission and that the people who are applying are sharing the art with their friends, families, loved ones, and clients, and that 
we do have a diverse group of people who are coming to our classes all ages ethnicities walks of life and the outreach really does support that mission and if you feel so inclined um, to give a gift we have a special donation campaign for Mary's 100th birthday and I would like to raise $10,000 on behalf of Mary and I would like to have 100 donors um, give us $100 and um, for this special donation campaign anyone who would like to make this contribution I have created these little notebooks with the kanji that say Mary Burmeister Jinshin Jitsu Outreach and they have a little pin and this will be our gift to you for anyone who wants to make a contribution to this campaign. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <Woo -hoo. laughs> Jody is um, my dear friend and very special to me and um, I feel like even though I didn't get to meet her Aunt Mary that I get to um, know her through um, her teaching and through her family which I feel so privileged to, to know through our generous community and um, Jody just gave me a check for a thousand dollars so I have a lot of dancing to do. <laughs> Your help is changing people's lives. The outreach was founded in 2001 to expand the work of Mary Burmeister in the art of Jinshin Jitsu physio philosophy. Contributions support medical research, educational development, implementation of grants that base selection on merit, need, or minority status, a selection of individuals to receive treatments, financial support for Jinshin Jitsu associations, as well as seminars, correspondence courses, and outreach programs in developing countries. In 2011, the Foundation partnered with United Charitable to reach its goals. So far, we have raised over $90,000 in charitable contributions to the MBJSJO. This year, we honor and celebrate Mary's 100th birthday and we thank you for helping us make her dream a reality. Get to know a few stories from people that were supported by your compassionate sharing. Thank you. Welcome, my name is Bridget Allen and I first wanna start off by saying a big happy birthday to Mary and for everybody that continues to do this beautiful work uh, <clears throat> doing Jin Shin Jitsu and I feel so blessed that I got the opportunity in 2013 through outreach to further my studies of Jin Shin Jitsu. I, <clears throat> I came upon a beautiful woman named Zena from South Africa and had my first session in 2013 and ever since then there was no looking back. I, uh, I didn't have any funds at that time, I'm a single mom raising two kids completely on my own and outreach provided me that opportunity to really dive into Jin Shin Jitsu to learn what it's about and now my kids are nine and seven and every night before they go to sleep they ask me to do Jin Shin Jitsu. Uh, my son the other day I asked him uh, what he likes about it and he told me that he can feel his heart and um, it's just changed the dynamic of my family and I, I feel really lucky and blessed to be part of this community. And I hope that in the future, uh, I can help teach Jin Shin Jitsu to other people and also be of some inspiration for other people that wanna go along this path. Um, again, I could not have done this without reach and um, I just appreciate being part of this beautiful family and I hope to meet you all in the future, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you, and thank you. If you would like to make a credit card donation online to the Mary Burmeister Jin Shin Jitsu Outreach, please visit www 
jsjinc.net and select the menu option for outreach and make a donation. If you wish to make a donation using a check, please make the check out to MBJSJO and send it to care of Kelly Mount, MBJSJO, P.O. Box 410, Simpsonville, Kentucky, 40067. All donations are fully tax deductible in the United States. I, I wasn't sure what kind of a day this was going to be because it was a little bit free form and we were, you know, hoping people would have good stories to, to, to share about Mary, but this really kind of blew me away. It was, a, it was a, an amazing day of getting to experience uh, my mom through, through all of you and through your experiences with her, and it's been more than touching and beautiful experience for, for me and my brother and Martha and the family. So thank you all for honoring us with these, with these wonderful stories.